Yeah, it's aliens again. Hey, welcome to the Game Dungeon. You know, aliens aren't actually my favorite thing in the world. I mean, they're okay, but it's more like I just keep running into them. It almost feels like my fate at this point. Well, get ready for some destiny then, with Conquest Earth. Conquest Earth. We start off with a long intro cinematic here that's showing us encountering some aliens, so we've gotta shoot them. There's a bunch of space dogfighting, even though I don't think there's any space combat in this game. It's an on-the-ground strategy game. This is another one of those games I didn't finish, and I remember problems, but it's all hazy past that. I remember the box. Yeah, look at that box. It came in a trapezoid box. Sure. Okay, let's get started. Whoa! Time for the credits already! Yep, warp speed. Now this game doesn't run natively on modern systems, but it looks like even a virtual machine isn't gonna cut it this time. I tried using a CPU slowdown utility and that didn't help. It slowed it down even in the wrong places and it still lurched forward. This isn't gonna work. Yeah, so I'm going full Windows 98 emulation this time. I'm not sure I've ever had to do that on the show. Yeah, that's better. Well, it's actually more complicated than this, but we'll come back to that in a bit. New campaign. Step aside, alien. Earth for Earthlings. Okay, here's the campaign screen, and, uh, huh. Yeah, this is a game we need a manual for. It's not optional. I mean, I have multiple satellites, trajectories. Quick, what's the topographical map say? Well, I lost my copy of the manual years ago. Hopefully there's still one online. Oh, come on, another one? I'm making them look bad lately, but replacement docs is usually better about this sort of thing. Well, this is a problem because I need a manual. Well, I did some more intensive searching and I found one on an abandonware site. But I'm not going to tell you which one. Not because I don't want to, but because I have to assume at least one of you is a narc. Hey, you know how the Internet Archive is having lawsuits against them? That's because somebody snitched. Yeah, I can talk about them. They've already been burned. Uh-oh, they're hosting an unlicensed copy of the Conquest Earth screensaver from 1997. Somebody call the police so they can delete this and obey the law. Yeah, that's better. Now we're having fun, obeying the law. So I'm not going to rat out an abandonware site. However, I was only able to find the manual in one place, and that's a problem. Look at this manual. Look at the resolution. Jeez, you think you saved enough space scanning it, guys? I can just barely read this. This is painful for me to look at. This is how you go blind, reading old game manuals. So I thought, why don't I try some AI upscaling magic? Maybe make it easier. Nope. Well, uh, what about character text recognition? Yeah, that gave me back something. Here, let's compare the results. Have you ever been given a choice between a couple options, then there's a comparison article and they weigh the pros and cons? And sometimes all the options are garbage, but the comparison acts like they're both reasonable choices? I have. And I'm not actually knocking these sites. I'm the one being unreasonable handing them an image like this. I don't think technology can save me this time. I'm just gonna have to overclock my brain. Oh god. Well, the manual gives us some more backstory. The space probe Galileo fell into Jupiter and was discovered by the Jovians living there. Gaseous, morphable life forms. They interpreted this as an act of war and assumed we were coming for their hydrogen reserves. Can't have that. So they had no choice but to declare war on Earth and put us down. Better yet, convert Earth to a sulfur-based habitable planet. And actually, the game foretold the future a little bit. Space probe Galileo actually did fall into Jupiter, but not until 2003, long after the game came out. So I guess we're behind schedule. Eh, space is big. Anyway, now that I have a manual, the idea is we're supposed to research and build up our forces before the aliens hit. We never know when or where. Then you move what you've built over to that location. And in the R&D screen, there's a dial to choose how much energy you want to devote towards research or building. 
I didn't quite get everything from the manual, but it made it clear that having a power plant is a big deal. So I'll have one city research a power plant and another one build troops. Or I do two things at once, twice as slowly. But, uh, okay, let's talk about time. The time for all projects is measured in days, but more on that in a second. That you would think the way you pass time would be a button to advance the day or something like that? You would think that, wouldn't you, you poor bastard? Oh no. Instead, we have a slider. All the way to the left is in real time. All the way to the right is a day every second or two. Yeah, that's way too fast for our research. So we need to move it a few hours at a time, check back to see if the work is still being done or if it's completed, then rinse and repeat. And try not to move the slider too much, otherwise you'll blow right past your target and waste precious time doing nothing. See, the longer you go, the more likely the aliens are going to attack. So you need all this time to get ready for them. But the catch, or one of the catches, is that all days are not equal. I think one day can mean one hour, or it could mean 24. I couldn't really detect a pattern to it, or if days changing at midnight was significant or not. It seems a little random. Just to show you what I'm talking about, here I am balancing research and industry. So training infantry will take two days, and researching a power plant will take two days also. See? So let's skip ahead two days. Okay, the infantry is done, but the plant is still under research. It was the same two days! Now when I first played this mode back in the 90s, I thought it was kind of neat. But now that I've been around, I'm not liking what I'm seeing. See, as this game progresses, we'll take back cities as they're attacked, and you'll expand your roster of available cities for research. But the thing is, your research isn't shared. So every city has to start from day one researching a power plant, different troops, and so on. This is going to expand at at least a linear rate. Now that's some busy work, and it might not be too bad, except this interface is god-awful. I mean, there's a small delay on everything. Also, when you switch between units, it slowly rotates them around. This is almost comical if you hit the rotate button and only have one unit to choose from. It takes a full nine seconds for it to go around. Also, the music starts playing when you're in the research screen, but stops on the world screen. But it starts over when you come back. You're going to be swapping between these screens constantly. So you're going to be hearing the first 10 seconds of this track a lot. Uh, uh, uh. But it's just everything together that feels miserable. This is like cooking food in the next room that you need to come back and check frequently before you burn it. Except more complicated. Now the news ticker here does tell you when a project is completed, but that scrolls up so slowly it's useless. If you wait for that, you'll blow right past it being helpful to you by the time the text actually reaches your eyes. But let's say you time it right and cook your troops properly. Well, by the time an attack finally does roll around, you need to go to the transfer screen and transfer your units to that location. So that means you're going to need to constantly train more troops to replenish what you're sending elsewhere at all locations on top of your constant research of reinventing what you've already researched. This is no good. I can see this is going to be torture the farther I get into this because the workload increases. It's like a pyramid. There are only a few bricks at the top. There's a lot of bricks at the bottom. And these are slow, delayed GUI bricks. Have you ever heard of developers of a game talk about quality of life improvements? Well, they're talking about the opposite of this. This mode so badly needs half a dozen modifications. It's just screaming to me. Well, as luck would have it, we don't actually need to deal with this. Maybe the devs realized what a mess they had created by the end? So they included an alternative campaign mode, where you skip all this and instead just head straight into the missions. Let's do that. Step aside, alien. Although before I start, I just want to point out that I'm not really sure what speed this game should be. I was hoping emulating any CPU from the late 90s would be enough, but no, it's pickier than that. Now, I'm emulating this at a variety of speeds, and at higher speeds, some animations look better, some look too fast. And the game itself can run a little fast to be playable, even if parts of it look better. So I looked at the box. 
Well, the U.S. copy says it wants a Pentium 100. But the German copy says it wants a penny of 133 or faster. Well, or faster is playing with fire. This is too fast. There's really no good answer here, because look at the timer in-game. That's pretty fast. Now, not all games use minutes and seconds. For example, Super Mario uses some sort of ticker that counts down, and these are faster than seconds. But these are in a minute and seconds format, but they're too fast in any speed. And yes, if I increase the CPU speed, these count faster. So how slow do I need to go to make this real time? Well, I don't know because I gave up at 60 megahertz because that's still a little too fast. I can't win. I'm gonna compromise at 133 megahertz and hope this is playable. So we start and, oh look, I'm under attack. Hello? Uh, guys? You just gonna stand there? Uh, mostly. Wow, I am not sold on this AI. Yeah, you have to get real hands-on in telling your troops what to do in this game. I want to say I may have seen AI this passive before in an RTS, but not many. We're just one notch above lemmings for our defensive instincts. You have to get involved for them to live. You know, they had to do this on purpose. A whole lot of RTS games can trace their gameplay back to Dune 2, which I've heard called the first modern RTS before. And look at that! In Dune 2, your units fight back when they're under attack! So we've backslided past 1992 here. Not a good sign. Although what is good is the background. It looks like a converted photo of a physical map model. It reminds me of a trailer for this game I can't remember the name of, but I'll probably find it in editing, where they handcrafted the entire background of everything you see. I'm pointing this out because I'm running the 32 megabyte memory version of this game. Yeah, on the disc it also contains a 16 megabyte copy. This is much more of a tile graphics look. Personally, I feel like that extra 16 megabytes of memory made a big difference. This is nice. Mostly. I don't like how this HUD is flashing non-stop. At first it's sort of with the beat of the music, which I guess is neat, but this gets annoying really fast. Thankfully, having constant flashing lights on your HUD for no reason is a trend that never got off the ground, but it survived here. And once again, you, the viewer, don't need to suffer. Just me. So I'll go ahead and paste a static image over this in editing, so at least one of us gets a break. Well, once you realize your soldiers are semi-helpless lambs that need to be guided to safety, the game is pretty straightforward. Select your troops, seek out the enemy, destroy. And again, I'm liking these visuals. That looks pretty cool for a wrecked alien base. Mission complete. The next level is more of the same. It's definitely janky controlling these soldiers, but it's manageable. I'm having to undo a lot of muscle memory since the controls didn't follow the emerging norm. So right click selects and moves a unit, left click makes them fire. I'm not even sure I can deselect them with the mouse. And the game does support grouping, thank god. But you have to press shift 1 and shift 2 instead of control. I can't really fault the game for this though. It's not like one style is really more valid than the other. It's just that this is the control scheme timeline that didn't happen. Now level 3 is- whoa! Under attack as soon as it starts! Where am I being attacked from? There are sulfur clouds everywhere! Oh, it's me firing! Can the troops see through the fog? Okay, I was a little slow on this, but that blaster sound is the sound of my air filtration troops dissipating the fog. You think that was the right sound effect, guys? This sounds like a stormtrooper shootout! I would have had a hiss sound, like from a sprayer? Something like that? This constantly makes me panic for half a second thinking I'm under attack. But no, they're just cleaning up the air. And they do a better job attacking the air on their own volition than the actual soldiers with guns do attacking the enemy. Anyway, this level is misery. We're back in Slogtown because you can't see a damn thing inside the fog. So you have to wait for the filtration guys to clean up the area directly in front of them and hope you don't get shot in the meantime. This puts me at a constant disadvantage because the enemy sees me before I see them and can take dibs on first shots. 
This is like mowing a lawn, except you keep getting shot while you do it. I hate this. I hate this gameplay. Oh, my view screen is doing something. What, my base is under attack? Thanks for the warning after it's too late. Yeah, there's no mini-map in this game either. Playing an RTS with no mini-map does not feel great. I do like the animation of them blowing up my base though. Too bad they blew up my base. Now I found out the view screens do have a purpose. If you press the right control button, you can map them to a unit, which I guess is okay, but I'd rather just have a mini-map. And I was making a mistake trying to clear the area. Instead, I should have gone straight for their base, which I had no way of seeing or determining where it was ahead of time, and blown it up immediately. Done. The next level is just a seek and destroy, but there's some stuff worth pointing out here. First, we have Bazooka Men now. These guys are good because they have the best range so far. I can actually take out aliens before they get to me. Not that I'm doing that, I'm just moving forward as a collective blob to clear out the map. And I'm pretty sure this game does not have friendly fire. Because if it did, oh my, this would be bad. What's not bad though are the visuals. This looks pretty great and it's making me glad I opted for the 133 megahertz experience. This would not be smooth on a slower CPU. In fact, I've seen unoptimized games on modern systems struggle with this many animations and transparencies. And you may have noticed by now, but the game takes a long time to purge the bodies. Maybe it doesn't at all. Sure, it reduces them to low-res sprites to save on memory, but this looks pretty great. And details like this add to the immersion for me. We should talk about the targeting, though. Now, the game does have different AI options for attacking or defending, but they're all a little wonky. Remember, my troops are lambs for the slaughter without guidance. Though to make up for that, I can get maximum range and attack speed by manually telling the troops where to attack, like this is a top-down shooter. I have seen this sort of thing before, but it's not common in RTSs at all. Now while this is nice, I'm missing a move to the area and defend yourself option. In most RTSs, say you want to attack a tower and some troops, but you want to let the AI prioritize what the targets are. So you say, fine, move here. If the target is in range, it will attack. If it's not in range, your troops will keep moving forward until they are in range. I'm really not seeing this option in Conquest Earth. So instead, I have to manually attack with the front of my troops and everybody stops and fires blindly forward. If I wait for everyone to regroup first, they'll be mowed down by the enemy. I'm not sure if there's any way for them to move to the vicinity of the target and attack in a way that makes sense. Well, it's a good thing this manual targeting works, because the enemy is spitting out troops like there's no tomorrow. Look at how fast this respawning occurs. I'm firing non-stop, and I can barely keep up. Jesus Christ, this is not a good omen of things to come. Oh, and I should mention, after seeing the jankiness earlier and the troops not defending themselves, I've actually been playing on easy difficulty, because this game was not giving me confidence I was going to have a fair fight. So this is easy. This is easy difficulty here. And I assume that repair symbol means the computer is repairing the base as I go. Well, I got lucky thanks to the magic of overwhelming firepower, but this woke me up in a bad way. After the spawner goes, it's a cakewalk. And I even beat the level before I thought I would because the briefing said I need to eliminate the silicon stores. And I hadn't done that yet. I think these were the storage units and I was taking out the mining rig, but I guess that was close enough. Huh. Well, from here it's back to standard missions of take troops and take down the enemy base. I can handle this. I like seeing the pyramids in Mexico in particular. We also get tire tracks from the vehicles. Again, I'm not sure if they ever fade away. This is ambitious. And a cutscene! Yeah, it's just some guy getting shot in the face, but I appreciate that. And in this level, I can finally train my own troops. Well, I have not been impressed with literally everyone else, so it's Bazooka Man all the way. This is both a blessing and a curse. I think they're far and away the best unit so far, but training them is bad. Training anyone is bad. Look at how you train a unit. 
First, you hold down the space bar and wait for the HUD to come up because apparently there wasn't enough space on the screen to have it enabled by default. I mean, where would we put our light panels on the top and bottom if we had a functional HUD there instead? But anyway, after you hold down space, you have to keep holding it down, then click here and keep holding down the left mouse button and drag it over. But not over these buttons or else that'll switch the menu. And guess what? No queuing. I can't just rapid click and tell the game to train 10 guys. Oh no, I can't even keep the same screen up. As soon as I select the bazooka guy, it resets the secondary portion of the HUD. So I have to go back to this tiny icon again. But wait, there's more. If I go back and tell the game to train another bazooka man, it won't do it and it will cancel my action if the first one is still training. Not available. And if you thought it was safe to finally train a second soldier after the first one walked out of the base, think again. After he walks out, he just stands there for maybe a second. Then I can train another one. There's no visual indicator of exactly when. You just have to guess. If I try to do it too soon, I have to start all over. Not available. This is absolute misery. Now, I was going to say I think this is the worst unit training process I've ever seen in an RTS, but it turns out part of this is my fault. I discovered, uh, rather late in the game that there is a key to repeat training the same unit you did earlier. So you still have to hold down space and hold down left click anytime you switch, and you still have to train one at a time before you can train the next one, but if I had known there was a key to do this, that would have helped. But that part's on me. This is just me suffering again for no reason. See, I don't know if this is the emulation, but the mouse control is really rough in this game. The footage may make it look easy, but I really have to focus to hit the targets properly. It has a tendency to not move smoothly or kind of snap to the edges. You know, exactly where the menu to train a troop is. It likes to snap past that. I don't even know how to describe it exactly, just that this is a lot harder to use than it looks. Anyway, training troops is absolute misery, but the saving grace is the bazooka men are so damn good that if I go through the map carefully, I can handle almost everything that's thrown at me. Very mixed feelings on this. Cutscene! Death from above! Roar! Now level 8, this one was a difficulty spike. Okay. First, let's look at the briefing to show I'm not crazy. Always a good first step. I need to reinforce the base with surface-to-air missile sites, since only those can stop the alien gliders. Okay, well I built a bunch of missile launchers, but no air offense ever showed up. Instead, it's a constant flow of ground troops. As soon as I killed one, another pack was right behind it. I didn't really have enough units to even launch an offense. It's like I couldn't get out of the front door. Am I supposed to launch an offense? It only said to build up my base, but how long should I hold out then? Well, that didn't work, so I tried building up mass ground units. But look, it's a small bottleneck to their base. But look at how many troops they have waiting. However, if we go up here, their power generator is exposed, and my bazooka men could hit that. So I tried going for it, but there were just too many opposing troops. So I need a massive ground defense and a large offense to punch through it. So then I figured, why not do both and just blast them as soon as they come out of their base and cut them off that way? Then I can send a few troops off to the side uninterrupted. Well, that was working, but my troops don't listen to me. Look at this. I told them to guard this area and hold this position. This is the most stationary AI option I have. Okay, good. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Where are you going, soldier? Why are you heading straight into the enemy base? Who gave you that order? See, I thought I was giving orders not to advance. But no, apparently those were just suggestions. You know, I wouldn't think those orders would be so hard for a soldier to follow. Just stand here and shoot anything that comes down that path. I'd have faith in almost anyone in the military to be able to carry those out. But not this army. Yeah, we get cut to shreds since we lost all of our tactical advantage storming uphill through a bottleneck. My plan would have worked, but hey, I'm not in charge anymore. He is, and he's dead. Well, this made me mix it up and think maybe I'm too reliant on the bazooka guys and I should try the vehicles instead. 
I didn't want to mess with these since they use fuel, and I really didn't want more micromanagement with them driving back to base with how jittery the controls are. But let's give them a shot. No, the enemy blasted them away pretty fast. Bazooka Man is still better. Okay, I turned off the music since it was starting to bug me, but I finally got it. By leaving a few guys home to defend and carefully timing when to slip my troops into the north, otherwise they all go for my second squad and never let it go. Whatever. Bam, my plan worked. Now this is fairly par for the course for an RTS, but between the controls and AI, this was much more painful than it should have been. And plot twist! I never ended up building the missile launchers! All I did was take out their power generator and BAM! Mission complete! The objectives lied! Not only was this bad intel, but this wasn't even my objective! Now this isn't a huge problem, since I think my objective is always just kill everything, and that works for me. But man, way to lead me astray here! Oh, and since I turned the music off, it's actually not bad. And it's composed of CD audio tracks on the disc itself, so it's very clear. The problem is, there are only three tracks. What the hell? Kingpin did this too. Pretty good game, good music, and only three music tracks. This is another trend I'm glad didn't catch on. Also, one part of the track makes this animal sound that I originally thought was a goose honking, but now that I hear it again, maybe it's a cow. The next level really tests my breaking point. First off, they're inside my base attacking my power plant in less than one actual minute. But even once I have some defenses, they just keep coming for me and won't let up. They're relentless. Once again, I don't think I can take a head-on fight. And once again, there's a side path over to their generator. But you have to spot this quickly at the beginning of the map while you can still see everything. Because this will get covered in fog in a few minutes. The problem is, I need to sneak around way up here. But again, I have to avoid the never-ending patrols that come for me. Otherwise, that will trigger a much bigger offensive on the aliens part. And I won't have enough troops to side route them and take out the generator because then I have to throw everything at the fence. Yeah, see, I have them, but they already had me. Dead. This is way more run and pray tactics than I like from an RTS. It all depends on me slipping a squad through unnoticed right around here. Anything else and the AI starts storming you and then it's a complete mess. Oh, and I forgot to mention, you can't save your game while on a mission. So if you make one mistake, you have to start over from the beginning. Or really, you don't even have to make a mistake. You just have to be unlucky. Since it's not like these patrols are on a fixed pattern, they can be different each game. I wasted so much time trying to slip a squad through here only to get spotted and brought down by the wrath of the Jovians. At one point, I even cut the CPU speed to see if that was impacting anything. I don't think it was, but that did give me more reaction time, which helped. I ended up cutting through, but it felt like luck a lot more than any skill. I really can't emphasize how awkward and imprecise it is to control and move the troops, even if it doesn't look so bad on the video here. The next level though, wow. First off, it's a nighttime mission. Yeah, that's exactly what I want when I have lights all around the sides of my HUD. Flashing lights, no less. Don't forget, they're still there. I'll boost the levels in editing so only one of us goes blind. Well, at least this time, the enemy has dropped all pretense of pretending to discover my patrols and is just sending nonstop waves of troops at me. Seriously, as soon as I finish one, there's another one coming over the hill for me. I hold them back, but they just keep coming and are whittling down my troops slowly due to AI imperfections. But I can keep this up for a while. Oh look, another animation! Okay, cloaked aliens are killing my guys. Good to know, I guess. Oh, they're morphing into an aircraft! And there it is! Alright! Oops, I'm unprepared for this. Oh yeah, it is wrecking my base. But hey, more animations! I like these animations. They remind me of ones you see at a bowling alley when you get a strike. So now I need those surface-to-air missiles. Okay, let's try it again. Also, I have bunkers available now. Let's give those a shot. The bunkers are good. The bunkers are so good. They absolutely melt all the ground enemies. They can't even get a shot off. In fact, these are so good that I have a new strategy now. I was just assuming the enemy had infinite resources earlier. 
Maybe they don't. Maybe they just have a lot. Yeah, look at all those bastards at the home base. Well, if the AI actually has finite resources and keeps sending troops at me like there's no tomorrow, I'll just mow them all down and turn this into a war of attrition. After the AI uses up its resources, then I can launch my counterattack. Well, I think the computer sees what I'm doing because it launches its air attack at me almost 10 virtual minutes sooner. And this thing hits really hard. I had about seven anti-air missile launchers firing at it nonstop and it still took out one of my bunkers. That's okay though. These are acceptable losses. I can rebuild and hold out a long time like this. But how long? Well, they keep sending their troops to die, and every few minutes they send another glider to hammer me. But I'm holding out. And that's it. This isn't ending. The ranks aren't getting any thinner. Look at that. The only thing that's ending is my patience. Alright, I held out for 50 virtual minutes, and it's not stopping. I give up. They really do have infinite resources. Not a fan. Oh, and remember the briefing? Air support is on its way? Yeah, it never showed. Though, that may be on me again. Here, let's try again, but this time I'll build a helipad. Aha! New animation! There it is. Maybe this is our game changer. No. It barely dents their generator, it gets shot up, and that's it. That was my entire air support. <sighs> I think I know what the game wants me to do. They want me to send a mass of troops upstream against this never-ending train of enemy troops along this winding path, which ensures the pathfinding is going to be a pain in the ass, then slip by their base right here and hope I don't alert every enemy in the vicinity, then hit their generator from the cliff again. This sucks, because I more or less have to pray I move my troops in at the right time at the gap in the patrols. This is why I don't like most stealth games, because I have to sit and wait and memorize the patterns of the patrols and slip in between them. Or in a game like this, sometimes there isn't much of a pattern and the patrol is semi-random. I just don't find this fun, doubly with this game's controls. Well, my first attempt had some success, but failed because I didn't take enough troops, because seriously, these curving paths are a recipe for disaster trying to move a lot of them. But I tried again with a lot of them. Well, a lot of them got lost in the snow, but that did it. That cut them off from having infinite reinforcements. The only problem is I went all in and training more troops, so I used up all my money and didn't leave enough for purifier guys. So oops, this fog is still here. Well, it seems my troops can see through the fog. So we're just gonna go in blindly and let them fire. Man, this is such a mess. Okay, I feel like I got them all, but the mission's not over. Oh wow, that's a target? Some moonshine shack out in the middle of Iceland? I'm glad I let the AI take over. I thought that was scenery. And that's the last one. All right, what's next? Okay, remember, the first thing to do is scan the enemy base at the start before half the map gets flooded in fog. Where's their generator? Oh man, this is bad. They're at the complete opposite end of the map and have infinite troop spawners and turrets right in front of it. And remember, this is all going to be covered in fog by the time I actually get to it. I won't be able to see any of this and there will be way more troops who can shoot me before I can see them. Oh look! My power plant is under attack already! No, I'm done. I have my limits, guys. This is awful. If this were a normal strategy game, I'd say this looks like a good map. But this is gonna be misery with their mechanics. Infinite enemy troops and fighting blindfolded is not a good time. If this was near the end, I might rough it out, but I'm only a third of the way through. It's only gonna get worse from here. No, I'm out. Sorry, everyone. But I hate giving up on this entirely. I've tried going through this game multiple times before. It's now or never if I'm gonna finish this. Maybe I should reconsider the campaign mode because it doesn't use predefined levels like this. They're more randomized. It's tedious, but maybe I can put my attrition strategy into play there and the enemy won't have infinite resources. Maybe. Let's take one more look at that. Also, is it just me or does that soldier look kind of like Peter Weller? I think he does. Back to the pyramid. I'll start with every location researching a power plant. 
And to maximize my efficiency, I'm going to have to keep moving this hard to click on dial back and forth between 100% in order to switch from research to development. See, this way I can have them all done in one day. So move forward a day. Okay, now we'll start researching some soldiers to... Wait, what the hell? New York is still researching the power plant? What about Buenos Aires? No, London and Buenos Aires are done. Why is New York lagging? It was all the same day. See, here I was, setting every region to 100% in research. Oh wait, there are population sizes. Oh, okay, London has a higher population. But wait a minute, New York has more than Buenos Aires. Okay, I don't get it, but I'll just keep researching. Okay, another day, my soldier research is finished, and New York is still researching the power plant. What is going on in New York? They're taking over three times longer to do the same work everybody else did. Must have been a non-union job. I mean, I can understand if the game has random events to spice up the gameplay, but shouldn't it tell me that? Shouldn't the game tell me there was an accident or a supply delay or something? I didn't see anything about that in the manual, but that's assuming this is on purpose. Who knows? I don't know what's going on. This is a more accurate portrayal of New York construction than I was expecting. Okay, moving on. It's more the same for about 10 minutes, really. I wasn't joking with how slow going back and forth between these menus is. Until finally... There it is. We're under attack. So I transfer all my guys over there, take a look at the terrain. This is pretty rad, actually. I like the extra mile they went on these topography videos. And in we go. Another ugly night mission. Oh no. I wasn't able to train the air purifier guys in time. That means I don't have them. This is gonna be bad. I need to rush now or else I won't be able to see anything. Against the odds, I somehow brought down their base. But no, they brought down mine too. So it's a draw, which means I lose. <sighs> all right, all right, one more time. Although this time, except for the power plant, I'm splitting up the workload and we'll see if that works. So one city training troops, another creating buildings, and so on. Yeah, this time I feel more rounded. I have bunkers, air purifier guys, bazooka guys. Let's do this. Transfer my troops and begin. Okay, training troops and... Wait, what the hell? My bunker is missing? Why is my bunker not here? We're gonna get to the bottom of that, but let's see if I can recover this. The purifier guys and the bazooka guys made it. That should be enough. Yeah, they're sending me a thick cloud, but I'm hammering them. Oh, they sent in a glider and now I'm being wrecked. I needed the surface to air missile too? On the first mission? Jesus, I'm not sure I had enough time to research that too. Yeah, I lost. But let's look at what the hell happened here. I was confused, so I went over my footage like a forensics detective. And it was revealing. There is a big problem here. Remember that transfer screen? I remember it feeling a little off, but I wasn't paying much attention. I did notice the buildings weren't there, but I was assuming maybe the buildings were just included automatically and didn't show up. But lo and behold, if we look at my starter footage from hours back, oh ho! There's a power plant. I didn't do anything differently. I researched them in all three locations, then built them in all three locations, just because the manual emphasized how important they are. But come time to go to battle, they're nowhere to be found. And that's the story all over. Now researching a unit is not enough. You have to produce them afterwards. But I did that. I didn't make that mistake. Something is way off here. But I can show you the problem in one chart. On the left is what I actually did. On the right is what the game gave me. I have no earthly idea what happened. Not only did it not give me all the units I made, but it gave me one I didn't. I never trained the Grenadiers. I only researched them because they were a prerequisite for researching bazooka men. Bunker, gone. Power plant, gone. Half the troops are showing up in the wrong city. This is madness. I can't play a campaign like this. 
It's just half randomizing all my actions. How can I form any coherent strategy? Now this is probably a bug, but I want the extra mile of emulating a full machine. So I don't know, I'm stonewalled. But I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Ross, just stop picking the losing side already. You have two choices and you keep backing the wrong horse. Fine, fine. Let's go turncoat and join the winning side. Well, they went all in on these visuals, though not on the sound. Listen to what the alien troopers sound like. That's your command. Yes, sir. Royal in. Yeah, it's the same as the human ones, just with the flanger effect added. Kind of lame. It's the same drill as before, just wipe out the humans. And to bring up the speed again. Look at how slow the transition is on the briefing screen. This is real time, guys. Uh, 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 uh. We are pleased. <laughs> the next level is a joke. I was done in two minutes. And in level three, I can train my own units. Oh my god, look at how fast I can train them. I could spit them right out. This feels like a cheat code compared to the humans. This is like being able to breathe again. I can actually amass forces without feeling like I'm going to the dentist now. And look at where I am! This is the same map I got slaughtered on earlier. However, when I just take the troops up the same path, they're murdering the humans. This is incredible. Absolute cakewalk. Oh no, not again. The honeymoon's over. We're back to not being able to see anything and having to chip away slowly at the fog. Yeah, because this is oxygen and nitrogen. You know, transparent gases. Oh no, I don't want to go back to this. I mean, this is easier than the humans, but it's still early into the missions. Can you imagine doing this while they're pummeling me with bazooka men or a bunker is chewing me up a few levels down the line? I can. I'm feeling all the pain come back to me now. I don't think I have it in me for a campaign worth of blind chipping away. It's not fun. This is not fun. Well, I guess all that's left is the alien campaign mode. Now the only reason I'm even considering this is I read about an exploit that if you cloak the gliders, the computer AI can't see them, including the missile towers. So that would make them effectively invincible, which I kind of feel is what's needed when I'm fighting an infinite force blindfolded that has the drop on me. Okay, so here's the mother screen, and naturally you have your five cast of elders, Though let's get real, you're gonna be spending almost all your time with the science cast. And honestly, does the Supreme Being Special Advisor cast even need to be here? Maybe I'm playing the game wrong, but I didn't find them helpful at all. But, you know, politics. But you're probably thinking, wait a minute, Ross. If this is the mother screen, where is the Ancient One? This is the most important battle for Jupiter. Shouldn't the Ancient One be here? Well, the game thought of that. See, the Ancient One is already out on the field. Remember those cloning pods? That's the Ancient One. They're all exact clones of the Ancient One. What more can we ask for? But back to the science cast, this is a lot less painful than the human campaign. You just allocate your silicon and get the job done. We're finally free of New York. It took us a while to get here, but we did it. Back in the meteorological cast, they helped me figure out what's a good target. Again, I like these topography videos. But the thing to pay attention to is how much silicon each site has. Eh, see, that's not a good site. There's barely any. Aha, but Hawaii covered in a glacier. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Okay, give the orders to the security cast and off we go. Well, I'm sorry to report that despite researching the appropriate morphing and cloaking upgrades, I couldn't pull off the exploit. I was able to break down the Jovians to their fundamental gaseous essence, I was able to cloak them, I was able to morph them, but I couldn't cloak the glider. Which means my whole campaign strategy is dead on arrival. Well, at least I got to see another bowling animation. See? There my silicon stores go. Fly away! You're free! So I'm drawing a lot of dead ends. Am I really still defeated by this game after all these years? Well, yes, but I have a couple cards left up my sleeve. The first is you can actually hack the mission campaign values in a config file in the game. This probably has everything I need to fix things, but it was a little bit cryptic. 
there's a ton of repeated values here. It would take me a lot of trial and error to figure out what I need to do to really rein it in per mission. And if I wanted a bunch of trial and error, I could just play the missions normally. They'll give me trial and error for days. So that brings me to my final trick. Cheat codes. Well, there's actually only one cheat code, but it's a good one. Level skip. Ooh. Now at first I thought these weren't working because the levels actually cap out at 15 on easy mode. So I was doomed from the get-go anyway. I guess I should have called the Conquest Earth hotline. Well, too late. I'm gonna have to man up and go to medium. Oh boy. Well, we can only skip five levels at a time, so let's take a look at what we've been missing. Back to humans. Earth for Earthlings. Level 15. Oh look, the entire level is covered in fog. Yeah, that really makes me want to play this map. Oh, and a glider is in my base already going for the power plant. Though it didn't actually attack me. I think because it can't see anything either. This is the blind fighting the blind. Well, let's check out level 20 then. Oh, fog everywhere, and it's nighttime. Boy, these graphics just sing, huh? I like the briefing talking about an elaborate assassination mission, but it's just dark yellow fog everywhere. So yeah, those are the fog levels, but level 25 is the fog level. Yeah, this really spices the game up. I actually got lost on this one because I strayed from my starting position and I don't have a minimap. So, uh, yeah, fog. You know the beginning of Star Wars where the Empire boards the ship and starts blasting, but there's a lot of smoke so it's hard for each side to see who they're shooting at? Boy, this is that all over. If you ever saw this scene and thought, damn, I wish every single fight was like this, except from a top-down view and even more smoke, then Conquest Earth is the game for you. Now this is actually making me think of something else too, but I'll get to that in a minute. As much as this gameplay is not winning me over, I can tough it out for the last level, can I? So let's cut through the fog to level 30. Our forces are overrun and we need your help. This is it, Commander. The last battle for planet Earth. My time has come. Let's do this. Oh look, the fog is so thick I can't even see most of my base. And I hear blaster fire, which could mean anything in this game. But I'm also hearing screaming. That means I'm under attack. Great. Oh, okay. One of my helicopters that I never knew I had got shot down. That was quick. I only know that because of the image on the HUD. It's not like I can see anything. Now in a game like this, there's absolutely no way I can beat this on the first try. So what I want to do is clear some of the fog and see what's actually on this map. Well, this is the end game, so that means I have access to air purifier buildings. They help, for sure, but they use a lot of power and only allow me to see my own damn base, pretty much. The air purifier men are still going to be our backbone. I'm building up defenses first, so I'm not overrun before I can even scout the area. Oh, they're coming for me. Ouch. Look at that slowdown. My fake 133 megahertz Pentium is failing us. This is the same CPU speed as earlier. With some things moving a little too fast, now it can't take the heat. Ugh, this is rough, guys. And there's more where that came from. Am I even going to be able to scout this map? This isn't gonna hold. I'll just scout what I can before I fall. Wow, they have enough troops to flood my base and come after my scouting patrol from behind. This is nuts. Well, my bunkers came through. Boom! Though I noticed the units were taking a lot more fire from them on medium difficulty. I thought there was no way I would repel that, so great, I can scout some more. Yeah, scouting is a slow and tedious process. I mean, in most RTSs, you usually have a scout unit that can move quickly and cover most of the map in a minute or two, but not here. Here we have fog, and it doesn't last long. They kill my scouting patrol, they come back to kill my base, kill my dog, it's over. Try again, because remember, no saving during the mission. On the second attempt, I was going to go west, train a bunch of guys, then as soon as I moved, they sent in a ship and my missile launchers just ignored it. Look at that, they're not firing at all. Yeah, that's out of range, huh? I also learned the giant gun towers can't hit air targets. 
Why are they so tall then? Okay, try again. This time I made a lot of progress scouting, but it's not because of me. It's because the AI just kept throwing me softballs. I swear, it's like the AI rolls dice to see how aggressive it is to you each session. Lots of fog clearing. And this brings me to my other thought. This game already predicted the Galileo probe falling into Jupiter. Maybe it got something else right, too. Okay, not to get all doom and gloom, but if I was a betting man, I would bet we're barely going to do anything to address global warming. That's not the same as nothing, but pretty close. So I think that means the Earth is just going to get hotter and hotter and hotter on average. Yeah, sorry, I'm cooking as I'm saying this. There are beads of sweat coming down my face. Anyway, I think it levels off eventually, but I don't know where that is, and it's certainly no place fun. So that's bad. However, I have heard proposals that eventually it gets so hot that we really start panicking, but it's too late to prevent the problem anymore. So what we do instead is blot out the sun. Remember a couple of years ago, there was a bunch of wildfires and San Francisco turned orange and one guy added the Blade Runner music to it? So yeah, it might be like that. And guess what the lead compound proposed to do this is? Sulfur dioxide. That's right, clouds of sulfur. Just sulfur all over. Although apparently sulfur dioxide is also a clear gas, but it causes a yellow chemical reaction once it hits the stratosphere or something. I am confused how that wouldn't poison the Earth, but one problem at a time, I guess. So who knows? Maybe Conquest Earth is onto something here, with yellow clouds of sulfur covering everything. Maybe this game is predicting more than we realize. I have seen the future, and I cannot see much. Not without my air blaster guns, anyway. Well, what can we see? I spent way too much time on this, but here's a sloppy map I pieced together. The alien base is somewhere to the southeast, but the level of firepower they have there is just staggering. I'm not even sure a direct assault is even possible. Remember, they have infinite resources. That's one thing the game gets right. You go up against infinity, you're gonna lose. Not that the finite troops are much better. Remember, I'm playing on medium now, not easy. And by dumb luck, at one point I got into a 1v1 fight between a ground troop the weakest enemy in the game, versus a tank. So how many tank shells does it take to kill a single alien trooper? One? Nope, that was a direct hit. Two? Nope. Three? Four? Five? Six? Seven? Eight? Nine? Nine. Nine tank shells to take out a basic trooper. The defense rests. Maybe I should have played as the aliens. Though I suspect the AI is just straight up cheating, and it would be misery no matter what side I'm on. And it is miserable. I was noticing the pathfinding getting really bad on some of the vehicles. I mean, it's already a clustered mess trying to move the vehicles with obstacles in the way. This takes a long time for the navigation AI to process. But look at this! Look at what I managed to capture! I'm sending multiple tanks across an open field, and they can't do it. They just choke out and stall next to each other. I can't send tanks across an open field. Yeah, the battle can wait. I need to document this. You see that blue bar? That's their fuel. They have plenty of fuel. Incredible. Hey, look! I found some footage of my tank drivers in their off time. Yep, there they go. But look at what else I found from dumb luck. Their generator. It looks like I can just barely reach it from across the river, sidestepping all their defenses. Oh, you're dead now. Skipping ahead, it's down. And they're gonna send everything at me now. Yep, they're coming. Oh no, they're hitting my base kinda deep. What? The game froze? Now? Now it freezes? Okay, okay, this isn't so bad. I can just redo this and hope the level of troops it sends doesn't overwhelm the system. Or whatever caused the freeze. Set up the defenses. Send my guys. Blind fire into their base. Boom. Down it goes. Oh no, I didn't leave enough guys on defense. They're pounding me. Not again. Okay, I just barely held them off. I had more than enough troops, but they were too far away. Now we have a long mop-up where I can't see anything, but they're crippled. I'm out of money, but this should work. Just slow and steady. 
Oh god, one of their vehicles. The suspense on this is killing me. A long, long mop-up. Mission completed. Oh -ho! Insert disc one. Oh, we're getting the cutscene. Here we go. What? What? What is this? It started to play, but oops, time for this too. I put that in. Back to the menu. No! No, they can't do this to me. <sighs> okay, okay. Not all is lost. I tried looking on the disk to see if the files are there, but no file extractor I ran on it was able to find anything. So I thought, okay, I've been running this on DOSBox X. Why don't I give PCM a try? Maybe it won't glitch out so hard. So I fired that up and... Whoa, what is this? I can't move left. Or I can, but it's so hard. It feels like using a mouse with a dirty trackball. I'm using emulation, but this is too authentic. I can move right like a champ, but left is fighting me. It's a stuttering mess. Is this a Zoolander mouse? What's happening? I'm not an ambi-turner. I can't turn left. Derek, that's nothing to be ashamed of. No, she's wrong. This is shameful. Look at this. I am dragging my mouse across the desk right now. This only happens in the game. This doesn't happen inside the emulated Windows 98 desktop. See, it's fine on both emulators. I tried emulating both a PS2 and a serial mouse. Made sure my polling rate was low in case that was an issue. All joystick input was disconnected. Nothing. I can't play the game like this. It was rough as hell with just the janky mouse and DOSBox X, but this is next level. Oh my god, how can I be denied like this? Ah, uh, okay. I actually saved my game when it prompted me for a disc swap because I was feeling paranoid. I'm not optimistic, but let's load that up. Okay, it loaded. I wasn't expecting that. Alright, now swap the disc. Nothing, it's frozen. Though this wasn't surprising. Sometimes people ask me, why don't you just use save states in all these hard games, Ross? This is why. This is why. When I most need the save, it loves to not work. PC emulation isn't like old console emulation, where save states are pretty bulletproof. Your saves will fail you. Alright, I have one more idea left. One. But I'm gonna have to play through this again, and oh god, it was so close last time. I want to see this ending, though. This is another one of those games where no one has posted the ending online. So it could be anything. But this is making me nerve-wracked, because remember, we never know how aggressive the AI is going to be. I could have an unlucky streak. Alright, build the fences, hit their generator, deal with the aftermath. Though this time, I juiced the defense as much as I could. Now, the long mop-up. Wow. Okay, here we go. Now, my idea is I had to switch out from the emulator to tell it to swap CDs, and then I click back in. I only clicked once, but maybe there is no way to switch back to the game and have it not register that as a mouse click. So this time, it's going to be hands-off. Okay, moment of truth. Oh! This is it! Oh, looking for mercy? Well, we're fresh out. You are dope! Huh, <laughs> that was an awfully casual delivery considering, but okay. Time to strut. Oh what, that's it? Lame! I mean, that was fine as a mid-campaign cutscene, but you don't hand people an ending like that after putting them through this! Well, I'm not playing the alien campaign. I couldn't get that exploit working on the last level, either. Besides, it'll probably just be them zapping a soldier, the end. I admit, it would have been nice to see the other bowling videos. I'm sure I missed some, but they reside in the dark depths of this game's files. So that is Conquest Earth. Oh, excuse me, Conquest Earth First Encounter. Also known as The Last Encounter. This one was suspenseful for me. I thought it wouldn't be so bad. Then it was so bad, I thought I wouldn't make it. Then I did, and it wasn't worth it. 
And I'm undecided if this is the worst RTS I've ever played. There could be worse out there I don't know about. It's so weird seeing gameplay this atrocious mixed with graphics and visuals this good. It messed with me. I'm gonna have to unlearn the alternate controls I got used to for the next time I play a normal RTS. It would be interesting to hand this game to an esports player. I think they would either find it amusing, since it's so different than something like StarCraft, even though it looks similar, or else it would cause them seizures because of how bad it is. This game could cause esports injuries. I guess the moral to this story is trapezoid boxes do not make the game. That's the episode! Stay tuned for the next one, where I could sum it up in one word, but that would give it away. Which is kind of the problem. Ah, you'll see what I mean. Dang, this screensaver is hard.